Why hello everybody that's out there on YouTube. It's your boy Maxwell coming at you with yet another video review. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Laser Op Leader Class Laser Optimus Prime. So let's get going into today's video review. <laughs> And so now, first and foremost, as always, when we get started with these video reviews, we're going to be start off by taking a closer look at the packaging, so long as I have it, and I still happen to have Laser Optimus Prime's packaging. Um, so yeah, obviously, a lead Laser Optimus Prime Transformers Legacy, Leader Class Hasbro 8 Plus. Uh, here we got a nice image here of Optimus in his robot mode and in his... Uh, truck mode looking really nice transformers generations uh, a little bit higher up here on the top of the box Oop, we got uh, transformers legacy on this side of the box we got that lovely lovely image there of optimus prime both in vehicle and in robot mode and we've got um text which i do have not even begun to starting to decipher yet so fault on mine but oh well such is life um, yeah, and then on the bottom we just got where it's barcodes and things. On this side of the box we just got the lovely Transformers Legacy artwork there. We got Optimus, we got Planet Earth, Hot Rod, RC, Blaster, Bulkhead, Transformers, Authentic, Transformers Legacy, Cybertron on the back of the box. You got your obligatory products. You got robot mode. You got... You got the base mode for the bait for the trailer. You got the robot, the vehicle mode. You got the QR code, which allows you to be able to scan to see his tech specs. Have I bothered to do that? No, I have not. Should I have? Maybe. I don't know. But hooray for the packaging. So moving right along, here we've got. Woo. Here we go. Uh, here we got Laser Optimus Prime opened up and out of his packaging. Now, as you'll recall from a few weeks ago when I reviewed the Legacy Velocitron Speed 500 Scourge, he is the exact same mold as... Well, the two are the exact same mold of each other. Literally, the only primary difference being is their, is their paint scheme. So let's take a closer look at... Optimus here. Here we're going to take his trailer, put that off to the side. We'll take a closer look at Prime. Here we can see very nice looking um, truck mode, if you ask me. Yeah, nice uh, red and black detailing throughout with the hints of blue, including some translucent blue in the windshield, and then some just blue for the feet. He'll get more blue as we get into robot mode. Nice flame decaling and detailing. Very reminiscent of the G2 Laser Optimus Prime, of which this is inspired and based. And then on this side of the box, uh, here we got his Autobot sign, which is a G1 Autobot sign, but oh well, such is life. I'm not going to complain. And yeah, uh, he's got silver paint for his rims, and he does have six rolling wheels, and so he can roll about quite nicely, quite freely, which is always good. And on the back here, we just got that po same port here that we've had for the last few sets of molds on this figure, which allows you to be able to plug his trailer in. And he can pull that, and he has nice range and capability for turning with that. And yeah, he can drive and do all kinds of fun stuff with that. Um, for comparison, uh, here he is next to R.I.D. Scourge. Yeah, sense of scale that way. Uh, here he is next to Legacy Voyager Bulkhead. Get a sense of scaling how he scales with him. Uh, here he is with Legacy Deluxe Class Skids. You can definitely see. Whoop, here we go. Nice bit of a difference there between their sizing, but obviously Leader slash Voyager and then just the uh, Deluxe. There you got that. 
Uh, for a leader class scale comparison, <laughs> because I can, here he is next to the Studio Series 86 Grimlock. He's so cool. I love Grimlock. I'll, I'll get more into that into it when I get into his review. So there you got that. Uh, here he is next to Leader Class Earthrise, Optimus Prime. So you can get a sense of scaling that way, obviously, with the two of them, because one is a flat nose semi and the other one is just a bed over truck. Yeah, this one's longer, but the trailers are about the same length. And if you wanted to, you really could actually take the trailer off of their trailers and swap them with each other if you really wanted to, which is a cool thing if you wanted to do that. Or if you wanted to customize this guy to like, look like the Bayverse Optimus Prime, then this trailer would definitely come in handy for that. But so there you got that. Here he is next to the Walmart exclusive G1 reissue, Optimus Prime. You can see how they look together. And then last but certainly not least for vehicle mode, here he is next to G2 Uni G Transformers War for Cybertron uh, Generation Selects G2 Combat Megatron, who is a remold with a slight head retool of the War for Cybertron Siege Voyager Class Megatron. And you'll be able to watch his review up in the caption card. So there you go with that. So we're going to take Optimus now. We're going to just take him and temporarily put him off to the side. And we're just going to kind of take a closer look at the trailer here. We're going to, from here, transform the trailer into its base mode configurations and stuff. And put this off to the side so that way we can focus on Optimus. Um, yeah, nice uh, dark gunmetal gray for located as well as red paint found on him as, for this oil tanker. Looks really nice, really cool. Got a lot of 5mm ports on there for your weapon storage, which is really nice. Especially considering the next line of Legacy, which is Evolution. And so I look forward to seeing how that all shapes out to be. Some reviews are already starting to pop out so we'll see how that all goes when we get there um as you saw a little bit earlier it does have an armature piece that when disconnected you can lower and set down which is really cool really nice now to transform this into its a uh, base mode what you want to do is you want to take this armature bring it back down take this front plate take it up bring it up and about from there, we're going to stand this upright, and we're going to split it down the middle. And here we've got our in-trailer weapon accessory. We're going to just take these, and we're going to take them and put them off to the side. Because I totally spaced showing the, the weapon storage for this stuff on him when I reviewed Scourge. So we're going to take that, bring those off to the side and down. We're going to take this little ramp piece, bring that down. And then we're just going to collapse this whole piece down. But before we do that, we're going to turn this around, bring that in and around, bring the armature up, and bring it up a little bit more, finish collapsing it, and voila. Here we've got our base mode. Yeah, it's the same base mode. I, I don't really care for it. It's when he's back on the shelf or when I'm not playing with him, it's mostly just going to be a trailer. But it's a nice feature and capability if you so desire to have it. In fact, one of the things that the box showed was having it be like this, where, where it's doing maintenance and repair on him. Which is really cool, if you ask me. So, okay, now that we've talked about that, same level of articulations, this gun can rotate and or be removed. Uh, this whole base piece can rotate and move and can also be taken, taken off if you so desire. So, but yeah, a nice little ramp piece for if you got little mini bots to just go, whoo. But yeah, that basically does it for that. And so now let's get into the uh, showing off of the weapon storage here in the here in his vehicle mode. Because, like I said, I totally spaced doing that with Scourge. 
Um, so the sword here has these two tabs that are located on here. What you can do with these is you can take them, take it under here, you got these two little slots right down under here. You can take the sword, tab it in just like so. And you've got your sword storage, which is really cool and very nice. And then when you come around back up here to the top, in between his legs, he's got, let's see if I can readjust a little bit of lighting. There we go. Here we can see, ooh, not only some really nice detailing, but you'll see in here two little tabs. What you want to do is you want to take his axe slash shield, and I'll showcase more of the fact that this can also work as a shield when I get him into his robot mode. You can just take this, and utilizing these two little tabs, these two little tabs, you can just tab those in right there. And voila, he's got, um, he's got his, his uh, weapons stored on him in his vehicle mode which is really cool and very nice. This gives him a little bit of an elevated bed platform look for his truck mode, and the sword stores very nicely. In fact, if you like wanted to completely disregard the trailer, you could. I'm not encouraging that because the trailer is a nice added piece to it. But hey, you got options, and as always, options are good. And so there you go with that. Now, there's not too much else to talk about while he's here in his uh, vehicle mode, so let's get into his uh, transformation. So to transform him into robot mode, we're going to get started off by removing his shield slash axe and his sword. We're going to take them and we're going to just put them off to the side right over here, so that way I remember them. And so now let's get into transforming him. Uh, to start off with, we want to take, if they haven't already, take these... Uh, gas canisters and we're going to take them and we're going to bring them in like so uh from there we're going to take the these sections here that are on the sides and we're just going to untap them and bring them up and out do the same on this other side take it bring it up and bring it out from there we're going to bring his legs down like so and then we're going to take raise up my camera a little bit Take his arms, and we're going to bring them up like so. This will allow us the capability to start taking this whole section, bringing it down, and rotating his waist. Now let's finish off his legs. Uh, from here, we're going to take these panel sections. We're going to close them up, split the legs, and open his feet. And voila, there you've got his lower torso all said and done so now we're going to work on his upper body uh his lower body upper body all said and done so now we're going to take this wind set this the cab section and we're just going to open that all up oop i think i may have done one step too soon gotta bring that back down so we can open all this up so that way then we can bring his arms Oh boy, he is not wanting to cooperate with me today. Oh yeah, that's right. After we bring that up, we want to split the grill section of this. We want to finish bringing all this up, and then we want to take this whole section, after we've gotten these out of the way, take it, bring it out and around, and take this lower section here, and just bring it out to fill out there. There we go. That's right. Uh, sometimes I remember <laughs> the steps in order, certain steps in order. Sometimes I don't. Uh, from there, we want to take his arms. We'll take these stat sections here, bring them up and out of the way so we can then bring his arms out. And we're going to finish rotating them. Take his other arm, bring that out. And from there, we just want to bend this all back just enough so we can then close these sections up and bring these sections in. They've got tabs that are going to go into slots to lock all that in place. We're going to close that all up and then we're going to take his arms and bring them into place and they will click into place locking them in. I'll bring that forward and we're going to bring that down. Uh, from here we're going to take, come around here, grab his head, bring it up, flip it up and out. 
Take this little panel section here that's on that's in the cab. Close that up and close that back up. And now we're going to take his forearms. We're going to open up the panels, bring out his hands, and rotate them so that they, way they're oriented properly. Take it, bring it up, bring it out, get it oriented properly. And once you've gotten that all nice and secured, uh, there you've got Op Laser Optimus Prime in his robot mode. And I do gotta say, he is looking really good and really nice. Uh, let's get in close here so we can take a look at the detailing. Very nice uh, blue for the for his head, uh, silver for his mouth plate and his head crest. He does have a lighter shade of blue painted for his eyes. There we go. Look at that. Oh wow! All kinds of nice uh, detailing being brought out here, and then coming down here, nice blue here on his chest. He got some little bits of yellow here. Um, yeah, nice mold of detailing. He does have a little bit of a backpack, and he's got big old shoulders, but that's kind of to be expected with this uh, figure. Uh, so, um, yeah, articulation does feature a ball joint, a little bit of a ball joint at the head, but mainly predominantly just a swivel that can go all the way around. These panels on his shoulders move out of the way to reveal that his arms can go forward that far, and can go back that far and out all the way if the shoulders weren't in the way. They could do a whole full 360 on the light ratchet, but the shoulder pieces are here, but so oh well. Um, he does have about 90 degrees of bend at the elbow. He does have a bicep swivel, and he's got a wrist swivel, which is very nice. He does have a rotation at the waist. Legs can go forward that far. They can go back that far. He can do the full splits. He does have the eye rotation. He's got a little over 90 degrees of bend at the knee, and his ankles do tilt. And so, yeah, he's got a lot of nice posability in his, uh, in his robot mode. Now, accessories. We obviously know about the sword and the axe slash shield, but another cool accessory that he does have is if you open up these sections, much like Scourge, he does actually include... Some uh, shoulder rockets, which are just casted in a translucent blue, which is really cool and very nice. Um, and if you open up his chest section here, it does reveal a matrix of leadership with nice molded detailing even within it. And this matrix can be, can be removed for him to be able to hold, revealing even more molded detailing. And yeah, same holding principle, just sliding it into the hands which is really cool, very nice. Now, as for his other accessories, it does include his sword. Now, the sword still does have the same tab, and so it just needs to slot into his hand, being mindful of that, and he holds that very nice and very securely. And, the, and his uh, shield slash axe, if you open it up, removing this tab from this little slot, you got your axe, in which he can hold that which is very cool and very nice in fact i can't remember if i showed this with scourge or not i'm gonna have to re-watch that video review you can even combine his two weapons into one big old sword axe thing which is dumb but cool in the same sense that you can do it they give you options and as always options are good so just take that take that and get Put that back into his hand here. And then, of course, as I mentioned, one thing I forgot to showcase with Scourge is you can actually take this sword, this this axe piece, flip it back down around, and then he's got like a shield, an energy shield of sorts, which is a cool feature and capability if you would like to use it. And so... There you go, and there you got that. All right, and now for comparison, uh, to start off with, here he is next to Legacy Voyager class, uh, Prime Universe bulkhead. So we can get a sense of scaling that line. He's, he's, he's a tad bit taller than bulkhead, who is a very nice bulky, <laughs> pardon the pun, <laughs> um, Voyager class. Uh, there you got that. 
Uh, here he is next to Deluxe Class, Voyager Skids. Obvious, obviously, a uh, leader slash Voyager, Deluxe. Yeah, he's going to be taller. Uh, there you got that. Here he is next to a proper leader class, in my opinion. That of being the Studio Series 86 Grimlock. Just so you can get a sense of scaling that way. I really love how these Dinobots are turning out, but I'll I'll go more into that in, on another video. Um, and now let's get into the next little st stretch of comparisons. Uh, here he is next to the Earth Rise Optimus Prime. So get a sense of scaling that way. Oop. Uh, here he is next to G1. Granted, reissue, but G1. Optimus Prime, so we can get a sense of how they look together. And here he is, next to R.I.D. Oh, Transformers Legacy, Velocitron Speedia 500 Collection, R.I.D. Universe Scourge. Get a sense there as to how they look together. And then last but certainly not least for this video, here he is next to my slightly modified, but still, G2 Universe uh, Battle Megatron. So we can get a sense of how these guys are going to look together, because these guys are going on the shelves next to each other. And yeah, they look really good. Really good together, in my opinion. I, I, just, I just love the way that these guys look. So there you go with that. And there you have it, my review on the Transformers Legacy, Transformers Legacy leader, Laser Optimus Prime. He is a very cool, very fun figure. Uh, yeah, this is, I mean, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm sometimes at a little bit of a loss of words just simply because he's a really cool, very fun figure. I will admit though, when I first got him, so be mindful of this as you're finding him. Granted, of course, by now they're moving into the future waves with like Blitzwing and stuff like that and whoever's going to be coming next. But mine actual, one, one of the smokestacks was actually loose on mine. So, and I glued it back on, which was a quick, simple, easy fix. However, that may not always necessarily be the case for you when you get your figure. So... Just be cautious and just be mindful of that. But I still wholeheartedly recommend getting him because he's uh, he's just a lot of fun. And uh, I look forward to seeing what more of a G2 Universe stuff that we're going to be getting. I mean, like, we got G-Axis and, I mean, obviously from the, from the, from the, um, from the War for Cybertron trilogy, we got, like, G2 Combat Megatron and we also got uh, G2 Megatron who were who are great well granted i actually never had the got my hands on the g2 green and purple megatron but i'm thinking i might get him might I, I don't know yet i don't know yet but i know that the holiday optimus prime that's going to be coming out here that's being released here soon is actually got some level of inspiration taken from some of the other g2 style optimus primes so Will they eventually release him as that? Or maybe a Transformers Prime Universe Optimus Prime? Who knows? I, I look forward to seeing what uh, future iterations come from from this mold, from for Optimus Prime molds. So, but I think that'll just about do it for this video review. So thanks for tuning in. If you liked what you saw, you know, you know the general drill. And also don't forget to check me out on social medias. Links, of course, will be in the description down below. And so until next time. Hey gang, thanks again for tuning in to this latest installment of Maxwell's Reviews. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel by clicking here. And please be certain to check out this other video review. And also be certain to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with whomever you think might like it. All the help really helps me out. And so again, until next time, fun people. Camera photo!